welcome to the first episode of this series. I'm your host, Martin McNichol, and I'm here today with my co-host, Guru's Marketing Director, John Serino. To give you a little background about John, he has years of experience in the media world, working with industry leaders like digital titan MindGeek. He comes from a strong SEO background, having attended and spoken at countless international media conferences, including SMX. And John has been an active participant during the evolution of tech media, and he's bringing his experience here today. He'll be with me as we begin to look at the evolution of the cloud across different industries. And since I wrote my book, Scaling Up Your Business with Cloud Technology in 2015, I've been on this journey with many business leaders as they begin to understand and take advantage of cloud technologies. Coming from such a strong tech and media background, John will offer invaluable insight into where things are right now and where they might be heading towards as tech giants like Google and Oracle continue to revolutionize an already dynamic market. Hey, Martin, thanks for having me on. Um, been looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. So today, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the cloud. And, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So 14 years implementing cloud solutions. So, you know, what changed in the last four or five years? What was the cloud in 2015 versus what the cloud today? What changed? Um, and a lot of it changed. And if you, you know, think about uh, Oracle CEO, Mark Hurd, that recently said that every business is a cloud business. And I think a lot of people can relate to that today. And um, we're going to talk about how relevant uh, is the cloud to businesses today? Because that, yeah. that's amazing, you know, the room that the cloud is taking in businesses. And, you know, Martin, I, I, I kind of want to point out how unique it is to have a conversation with someone like you on this topic, because the fact that you were right really an entrepreneur in cloud technology back back in the day. Yeah, it's true that a lot has changed, but also, right, the mentality around cloud technology has changed, the adoption of it, the way we use it. I mean, you've seen you've seen the growth of it literally from the beginning, and that's kind of like how I want to pick your brain on the topic. Like what what are the conversations like today versus the conversations you had at the beginning? If you look at back in 2005, um what we call the cloud today wasn't called the cloud. I mean, people were referring to this new technology as application service provider or ASP. Right. Um, the whole concept started, um, you know, when I've, we had this conversation many times, and to me, I always say it, there's two pieces of technology that enable the cloud, which is high-speed internet and the browser or the ability to have this user interface that you can use with any device. I mean, we can be, I can be on a Mac, when I'm flying around and I get the same look and feel, the same experience. So the browser is so important in all of this. People tend to forget that these two pieces of technology really shaped up what we are using today in a you know very simple way on, on any device. So that that changed a lot. The ability to have streaming content or high speed content in browsers with you know, we never think about it, but those are like mini supercomputers that we have in our hands that can do a lot more processing than than what was the case before. So, I mean, all of this changed a lot in the last the last fifteen years. You know, what's really interesting about it is that it it kind of feels like it's gone back to what it was in the late eighties, early nineties, before we had computers and we just had terminals, right? Because all the data was really you were. If, if you're as old as I am and, and you've worked with a terminal, <laughs> which I think I am, right, you know that you didn't actually have a computer. You had a screen um, and a keyboard and if you were lucky, a mouse and and you were just calling information from a central hub and everyone was sitting at their desk with their own terminal calling from the same information. So the, the information was located in one place. Of course, that technology was limited. So we, we transitioned to having a, a personal computer at your desk, but that siloed information, right? Yeah, very siloed. But the concept of reaching on one central location to get power, um, you know, a lot of power and a lot of information in centralized systems, because it needed a lot of CPU to run all of this and memory, which was not available you know, at home. Um, we're seeing that today, however, used for different purposes. Um, so instead of just data processing, now we're using this more and more for complex algorithm. 
Um, and I'll try to refrain from using artificial intelligence or AI too much. I call these advanced algorithms where uh, you get all these pieces of data, another buzzword, big data, right? So how do I get you know, enough processing to get all this information from where was this phone at in terms of geolocalization? What store did you go to? What ads did you view? It takes, you know, a lot of processing to do all of this. So it's kind of flipping on itself where it goes back to having those huge processor or those yeah. huge machines to process tons of data to run those complex algorithms. And then you get back that service of, hey, this is what I need. I need to have access to where has that person been? What have they done? And uh, that's kind of spooky, actually, to have all that, all that information at your fingertip. But well, that's what's happening. I mean, we think it's spooky, right? Because yeah. given going back to our age again, but we're not old by any means, but we are older and uh, in 40 somethings and 50 somethings. But uh, our kids, I think, Martin, will grow up and, and have absolutely no problem with data tracking and data mining. It'll just yeah. be a normal thing. And, and something interesting that happened. So last week, there was an article on the Weather Network. And they were talking about how the Weather Network is tracking. When you say, please track where I am to give me good weather, um, it's actually using that information to push uh, more more ads and say, you're right, that's interesting. Uh, maybe I don't want that. So I went in my phone and I followed the instruction to deactivate it. But I thought about it and it said, hmm, wait a second, let's see if they can do it, right? It, I think there's a lot of, of initiatives that people that are trying to do something nice, but it's hard to do this. These complex algorithms, they don't have it 100% yet. So that's something that's work in progress. So I left it on. Uh, but I don't know about you, but so far, all they can do is basically repitch something that I bought last week on Amazon. You know, they're trying. Yeah. After I've already purchased something, and then I'll get this, an ad from Amazon pop up on the same product. Exactly. You would assume that the algorithm would at least understand that that's already been checked out, right? And, and they don't. And they they don't. don't. Yeah. Something useful would come out of this. So I'm in the store or I'm walking somewhere, and here we go. My phone would say, hey, Martin, you really like that new device or that new gizmo or that service and it's available now and it's next door i actually uh, visit the googleplex uh, i visited it a few times and the last time i was there i was kind of privy to a demo of uh, the ai that they're working on and they they kind of showed a video where someone is standing in front of a store it's a boutique and she asks google what time does it open without even referencing the name of the store so they're working on exactly that like they conceptualizing are. they are all that good stuff and they're trying, you know, to have those bots to to make a call for you, an assistant, and say, you know, make an appointment. You've seen this one, the video, right, where the Google executives say, okay, make an appointment for, you know, for a haircut, and then the assistant calls into a store and, and makes the appointment. And I think in a controlled environment where, you know, you know what you're doing and it's a specific use case, that can be interesting. Uh, but I love technology. I love to turn my gadget on and everywhere I can in my car where I have, you know, my, my phone connected, my Google phone um, running Android on with my car. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting to see when you're in a real life situation and see how the system behaves where it's not there yet, but it's, it's you know, it's just, it's very close, right? Yeah. So, but I need to do some setup and I'm, I'm in technology. I love technology, but it takes a lot of work for me to get things working still. So we have ways to go. I think there's a lot of hype and um, it will get there, but the the level of the technology right now is not where it should be or where it could be, where everybody, and I, I use my mother all the time as, as an example, where my mother could go in and just take her phone and say, okay, Google, right. do this for me. You know, it's, it's great. Yeah. We don't have our computers or we don't have our phones around us because it would have answered that question. Okay, Google. And... <laughs> Our phones are out of this recording room. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, totally. So look, I'm actually, um, I'm really excited to be here and I'm, I'm really glad you invited me on. Um, I read your book. For those of you who don't know, Martin is also an author. He, he wrote the book, Scale Up Your Business uh, with Cloud Technology, which is the inspiration for this podcast, right? It is. And I'm really glad you, you decided to do this because I think that, you know, you're just on the topic of predicting, forecasting where technology is going to go. I think that that's where your experience in the cloud and, and technology is fascinating. And and one of the things I wanted to, to bring up that to me was really interesting was the laundry store. And, and it's actually an appliance repair store. 
that's actually two blocks away from from our office. And I walk in front of that appliance repair store um, almost every day. And I ask myself, you know, why are they not using the cloud? Um, and it's always been the same. And what's funny is that the owner moves his desk in the office. So so you'll go in and for a year, it'll be at the end, you know, and there's this warehouse where you see all the different components and appliances here and there. And they're a local shop and we have trucks going around and repairing appliances and they're dispatching via phone and he's using this dot matrix printer to print your invoice when you're just going in there to buy right feels like you've just walked into 1998 it is it's it's 1990 it's yeah. it, it's interesting and these guys don't want to change anything and i've asked them a couple of times what systems are you using you know what's your accounting system what's your you know distribution system what are you using and you know you know we're just using this and it i look at it and it looks something that's been built with fox pro and for them they're doing great i mean they've got people on the road Trucks are going back and forth, and they don't want to scale. This is where they want to be. They have no use for the cloud. In their mind, you know, they say, I don't need this thing. I can run my business, and that's all. And, you know, I like those guys, and that's too bad because I'm thinking, all right, when is the new Uber of appliance repair store coming? Yeah. What is going to happen to those guys? just going to disappear yeah or the, the, the famous blockbuster versus netflix metaphor that everybody knows now right exactly i mean in business school we you know you, you're thought about the kodak story right where kodak was the leader in film and then he actually put a lot of patents out there for digital film but he said all right we don't want to do that because we don't want to hurt our film business and then somebody else took the leadership there yeah. and is this going to happen for that type of business so which leads me to believe that Every business is a cloud business. Every businesses need to look at their business model and say, all right, how can I do this better? Um, they don't even have a website. Um, they, don't, they don't take orders online. You got to phone in. Uh, so these are all basic things that people kind of expect today, where when they want to deal with you, they're expecting this, this easy way of doing business or getting contact. And it's not even a, a measure of the service level that you're giving. That's what's interesting. They give good service. So we might lose that because they might not get that edge and they're going to be replaced by other players that they might not even be local, but they'll seem local. Yeah. And, you know, at the same time, like we talk about scaling up business through the cloud and that's really valuable for sure. But at the very core of cloud technology, there's efficiency. And so if you take away the scaling up part, you're still gaining by, by going cloud, even as a small business. Right? There's the efficiency, there's that central hub where everything is connected and access your data from anywhere. So go home earlier, your accounting is made easier, your days are shorter. Go on vacation with your family and you can still look at your data from wherever you are in the world. Like the, there's, there's no limit to what the cloud can do. And it's interesting to even think about what it can become, where it is already. And it is so true. And just look at, uh, you know, non-for-profits. And I, I sit on, on... You've done a few, right? Yeah, and I sit on two boards yeah. of non-for-profits. And, um, you know, every year they do fundraising events. And what's interesting is that on top of, you know, selling sponsorship or tickets for, you know, a high-hand event or, you know, just a spaghetti dinner, um, the way that people interact and the way you collect money is very different. Uh, today, we just go around with our phones, we connect a little square device, and we just swipe people's credit card. Um, I was at this event, uh, not one of my foundations, but at this event where they had a very interesting idea. They had those glow sticks on the tables. And when you were all sitting down, when you were breaking the glow stick, so making it glow during the night, somebody would come to you and then you would make a $100 donation. So think about it. It's like a $0.25 cents glow stick. You would crack it, and then you get $100. So in the past, that would be difficult to say, all right, you broke your glow stick. Now you got to pay $100. Now they just walk around with the square and just scan the card. Flip, here you go, $100. Thank you very much. Right. So How do you that, collect on that in the past, right? Exactly. But today, yeah, absolutely. And it's the cloud that yeah. enabled that. The fact that you can plug the, a little device on your phone, it becomes a point of sale. And you're authorized to swipe somebody's credit card and get their money in your account. So, I mean, technology is everywhere. And there's a lot of, of ways that it can be used to facilitate uh, interactions with your customers or donors and uh, 
and discuss. You know, but on that note, what does it mean? So I have a question for you. Like, what does it mean um, for an entrepreneur in 2019? We've heard the famous phrase, if you're not a club business, you're not a business. I get it. Um, but it's, it's fascinating to me, even like uh, being at Gurus, right? When we see just how many people are still running their business on spreadsheets. Spreadsheets or on-premise systems or just older versions. And we see that, you know, so many times, John, and, and in my network, you know, you know, you develop friendship with other, um, other CEOs and they come to us and they run, you know, sometimes smaller business than are, ours, sometimes they're bigger. And they come to us with real problems and they say, you know, I have to run like three version of QuickBooks because uh, I've got a business in, in Europe, I've got a business in Canada, I've got a business in the US. I'm thinking of opening something in uh, Latin America. How can I run all of this in one integrated system? And that's these are real problems, right? And they're trying to solve this with spreadsheets or now they want data, they want dashboard. And it's sad because solutions are out there and it's just taking the leap and say, okay, I'm going to use something else to run my business. And many, many uh, companies, you know, have thought about hard about that problem and they have solutions out there that people can just log in, register. Now, an implementation is hard of, you know, complex business software, but um, they can run their business better and allow them to grow to a different level without having to hire tons of staff to crunch the numbers. Yeah, I think it's exactly that. I think like, you know, in terms of scaling a business, there are there are occasions where the technology itself will certainly help. Um, you know, connecting your your operations with with your finance directly, having that that bird's eye view on the inventory, on the on the purchase orders, on on all of that. That's amazing. And so, and and in some cases where you know we've done an implementation for for online retailers where we've helped them through their Black Friday sales and they've just doubled or tripled their sales through the technology. So that's an example of how the technology can scale you up. But the obvious aside, I think you can do one of two things and you can attest to this as a, as a CEO yourself. You can either spend your day working or you can spend some time thinking about the next level of your business. And that's what I think the ERP and technology does. And, and how do you use technology to help you grow your business? And in the case that you mentioned, um, so their problem was real and, and the way to grow for them was dramatic, right? They needed to connect to Amazon, to Walmart. And with that, it got them to, you know, stratospheric levels, if that's a word, right? So, yeah. and they've got hundreds of thousands of orders during Black Friday. And they've been able to accomplish that because their usage of technology and partnership and other attributes, but without technology, uh, in, in their case, without cloud technology, they would have to invest 10 times more uh, than what they had to spend to to basically get there fast. And we got them there in six months. Yeah. So that was quite amazing. And we were, of course, super pleased with that. And, uh, and they continue to grow. On BCP, we did a success story on them as well. We have a great relationship with them. What's really fascinating about them is just how big they are. They are the largest supplier for Amazon. And, and the second largest online retailer outside of Amazon, right? They also sell independently. So the fact that, you know, they, like you said, their problem was real and they were running their system on like, what, what you quoted in your book as antiquated systems is impressive. So yes, you can run a business in 2019 without the cloud technology, but you're tripling your sales if you have it. It's, it's just amazing what yeah. it can do. But at the end of the day, I mean, these are tools for entrepreneurs to get them to the next level. Yeah. And I think the message is they don't have to do it alone. They can use this technology to do what is not their core business. Um, and, and that's just amazing. Yeah. Right? You don't want to start developing email systems and, and people still do. And I'm hearing companies that say, you know, we have still our email server and we want to develop this spam filter. And I'm thinking, you know, what's your business? Why, why are you spending all that energy other than Okay, you like to fiddle with computers, but that's not your business. Why do you have to worry about spam, right? You need an email system that's going to get you there. Sometimes, you know, what I've noticed is some of the people I speak to are aren't really aware that their technology is outdated or that their, their technology is is not serving them, right? That's not that's I don't want to use the word failing, but like that their technology is not serving them 
as it should or as it can. Um, what, would, what would you say are the core signs? Like what, what's like, what's the biggest, what are the core signs that your systems might be outdated? How do so, you recognize that? So to your first point, you know, and you're right, a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize it. And I'm, you know, I'm attending those round tables where we talk about a specific topic. And there's one recently that I've attended on marketing. And um, so we're around a table and we're talking about marketing. And of course, there's a lot of people that are talking about push marketing and, you know, inbound marketing, outbound marketing. And uh, you realize that, you know, you look at those people and I say, what, what are you talking about? And then you talk about the tools where you measure conversion and all the tools that are out there and you can see it in their eyes. I'm missing out on something. You know, what's going on? And then they start to ask uh, more information and you see it by the level of the questions that they have. Like, how do you measure this? And how can you know um, the amount of people that are coming to your businesses? How can you measure um, you know, close rate. And you see that they're definitely not there in terms of, of using those tools. And inside those companies, uh, you can see that when you go in and you ask them questions, it's, how are your processes set up to, um, you know, accommodate new customers? How do you onboard new customers? How do you measure close rate? And you can see it in their eyes. Like we don't, we, we just don't, we don't have tools or uh, we had a sales rep that was using uh, ACT as a you know contact manager and he left or his computer died and you have you hear all those yeah. horror stories like an excel spreadsheet that people say well he downloaded it and he updated it but he overrode my version and you you know you're thinking why why are you doing this to yourself why are you just not you know embracing some you know new tricks to to just get this you know easier for your business and but you can see it their processes are truly antiquated and uh, the reason is they've been doing this forever. That's how they've been doing it. It's amazing, right? How you become institutionalized to your technology and your mid-sized business is, re is dependent on the laptop of one of your sales reps. Oh, the laptop, I think it's new technology. Sometimes right. it's an old desktop somewhere yeah. with, with um, a lot of dust around it sitting on a shaggy carpet. That's scary. So what are the questions that you know, as, as an entrepreneur, what are the questions you ask yourself when you start looking for issues? What, what are you supposed to recognize? What are, I mean, if you don't know, you've never had the data, you've never had the tools, what should you, what should be your first step in looking at updating your technology? And the first step, you know, even before we get to technology, I mean, the questions that I ask those entrepreneurs is that where is it that you want to go with your business? What is it that you're trying to do? And you know, I get multiple answers of that. Some of them is like, well, I'm struggling uh, to grow my business or I'm struggling to stay alive. Uh, I'm having issues with, with finance. I'm having issues with sales. I'm having issues with controlling my production or my inventory. So these are some of the basic questions. And uh, these people are just trying to stay alive. You would call them like they're in survival mode. So they don't, their head is not around putting something new. They're just around, how can I patch this? How can I just solve my basic um, urgent problem. They're basically right in firefighting mode. Um, so these people are not the one that will start to put in place a large uh, initiative to uh, grow their business. They need to patch things up. And uh, then the second level are the entrepreneurs that say, all right, I've got this. I understand my processes are not automated. I got this under control, but to grow, I know it's going to break. You know, um, my systems are going to break. And uh, that's where we, we start to really help them out, where we can say, all right, uh, where are we starting? You know, what's your base? And is it your financials? Is it are, are your sales the problem? Is your um, production engine, whatever that is, what's your revenue generating machine? And how can we help to automate some of that so you're, you're not in trouble uh, when, when the, um, the volume starts to come in? And it's really about how do you recognize which processes are going to break first and some of them know <laughs> because they've, they've lived through it they've lived through a black friday or to a um, you know a holiday season where uh, an influx of order or it's the summer or the winter depending on on your business where you get all those orders and how can they process those orders in, in a good way how do you uh, satisfy your customers how can you fulfill all your uh, all your orders without any mistakes or leaving money on the table. 
you know, like hearing you speak about this, it's clear that there's experience there. You've done it for your own business. You you actually use the technology you're talking about. You're not just you're not just in the business of implementing it. You're a user. I'm 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 a, I'm a geek. Um, um, I, yeah. I like like my VP of professional services likes to say likes to call our system my toys. I say these are not toys; they are tools. But he, he, he <laughs> makes he makes fun of me. But um, I've seen um, so many upsides of trying new technology and we've tried many i mean i think we've we've changed um video conferencing system five times since we started this company and it might you know it might still change in the future we're evaluating tons of tools in, in parallel to see if there's one that's better and every time that we change we got something better that was uh, doing more or actually just easier to fit into our, our ecosystem yeah hey martin look i'm looking at the time and i know you have to go because you're super busy as usual and uh, but I, I do want to thank you for uh, you know inviting me to be here and doing this with you this has been a lot of fun John thank you for your time thank you for being here with me and uh, can I invite you back yeah it was it'd be fun. a pleasure we're geeks so it'd be, it'd be fun to come back look I do want to say though like uh, for, for people listening if you enjoy this type of conversation a lot of this is Martin's book he's a very talented author as well as being an entrepreneur and uh, I'm not, I'm not product placing here, people. I'm not selling a book. <laughs> you give it away. You give it away. So um, we'll have links at the bottom of this podcast of where you can get the book for free. It's a great read. And if you're really looking at scaling up your business, uh, taking that step to the next level, there's a lot more detail. Coming. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. And stay tuned for episode two coming soon. Mm-hmm.